David Nelson Doherty, born and raised in Portal, the old Portal Hospital. Mm -hmm. Moved to Harwood and built a house, and wasn't for me. I'm come back to Porthole. Mm -hmm. Always been a Portholper, and uh, basically, uh, you know, been involved with the minor hockey, baseball, all through all through my life. Uh, started out actually, uh, my my grandparents uh, lived here in Port Hope, uh, Gillard Darling and Vera Darling, and it's odd that uh, you know the Greenwood Towers down the road. Uh, mm -hmm. The first little place I guess my mom and dad went to it was one of the little cottages at Greenwood Towers when they uh, first were married, and uh, they were waiting for our wartime house to be completed and to move into, and uh, my grandmother was running the, uh, managing the Greenwood Towers at the time for okay. the people. And we got to spend a lot of Christmases there at the Greenwood Towers. That's and cool. you know, we, my sister and I would run, on Christmas Day, we would run ice to the people who would stop in on Christmas Day to, <laughs> and, they were, and they were traveling. So we had a lot of fun there, and all, did a lot of hiding in the, uh, the building at Greenwood Towers. So in the tower, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, we, you know, we owe that a lot to uh, to my grandparents for doing those things. Um, Port Hope, you know, is with you can remember some of the things uh, you we talked about Coleman Phillips, the big fire at Coleman Phillips, but I can remember uh, lining up at Christmas time, climbing the stairs at uh, at Coleman Phillips, the winding stairs and the stairway, and sitting on Santa Claus's knee, and not till. Oh, I'd say sometime in my teenage years, at my grandparents, I was helping them clean up the uh, the attic, mm -hmm. and lo and behold, here was the Santa Claus suit that my grandfather wore when I was sitting on his seat, <laughs> on his knee at, at the uh, at, Golden, at the Coleman Phillips. So you know, you, you never know these things. As you're, I worked at uh, two or three of the gas stations in town here, one right at the Shell and the. Uh, the shell down the road for Mel McMahon Motors and Canadian Tire Store on John Street, Cooper Tool. My grandfather was a was a supervisor at uh, Cooper Tool, so you know I sort of had an in there to get a job <laughs> when I needed it, and uh, um, I knew all the supervisors and that. But as life went on, you know I moved on. I went to Zircatech and then basically Westinghouse, Westinghouse, then Zircatech actually, then Chemical. So it's it's been a it's been a quite a life, mm -hmm. but I can remember actually you know with this you know Arthur Street you know and it wasn't until actually I started uh, you know, with the archives that I realized that Arthur Street was one time where the fairgrounds was, and uh, you know and everybody talked about Monkey Mountain eh and mm -hmm. as kids we used to all play down in Monkey Mountains not knowing that how did that ever get to be Monkey Mountain eh and you know the old t tale is that. They had the fair at the uh, Arthur Street, and the monkeys got loose, and that's how it got to be Monkey Mountain. But I think that's a fairy. Uh, over on Ontario Street, uh, there used to be, where the liquor store is now, there used to be a called a Western Tire. Mm -hmm. That's where I got my first bicycle. My dad bought my first two-wheeler there, and, uh, and you know, and, and, and it was Canadian, Canadian Tire was on John Street, a small store on John Street. Uh, and then eventually uh, Canadian Tire moved down a little further on John Street where the um, uh, restaurant, one of the restaurants are right now, but they were up the street before uh, in a little store. But uh, uh, Western Tire, I can remember that being there and it going across the road, Brown's Feed Lot or Brown's Feed Store. And you go in there and you could smell all the chop and the, mm -hmm. all the seed stuff and everything. It was sort of neat to go in the, the, the old store and and see those kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, and the trains, the trains used to come up, you know, the, you know up through the, the town and go to Rudder Granite and mm -hmm. things like that. So it was, it was interesting to, to grow up and see these things that uh, aren't there now and, uh, you know, you, you sort of miss that old stuff really. Well, a lot of the changes came uh, with basically the change, uh, the 401. Mm -hmm. um, when, uh, like we lived on Arthur Street, right on the corner of Arthur and Toronto Road. And um, at night, you, you know, as you're laying sleeping, you know, the trucks would go by the house and, 
you know, sometimes you go down in the morning and make, one might not have made the bend and was sitting in somebody's house and <laughs> and coming down the main street, there's a few basically ran the, you know, the, the corners at and downtown. But I think the 401 with the closing of the four, or the number two highway and the 401 opening um, basically killed a lot of businesses in town. You know, like coming into town, there used to be the you know like the little cottages and and people would make a living. Uh, there was Clayton's and and um, um, Swales's. They all had like their their homes were there, but they had little cottages where people would stop at night and and spend the night there and then move on the next morning. Uh, you, you know you go the other end of town here. You you had the um, the Globers Inn and uh, Globers uh, was uh, there were the uh, uh, sh where shoppers used to be along that there route there, and uh, um, uh, that was uh, quite a motel. And then you had Greenwood Towers. Greenwood Towers is almost right on the edge of Port Hope at the time, mm -hmm. because it, you know it was just on the edge of leaving town. But those you know they sort of lost that business um, during that time when the. Uh, um, the change was made. The 401 came in, and, and a lot of businesses closed up, shut down because the the traffic wasn't there uh, yeah. for the, the you know to make. And then there was other little places around, like that uh, in a bake shop, Happy Home Bake Shop. You yeah. know, you could go in there with your parents to get something, and you always had a free cookie. Yeah, <laughs> you always got a free cookie. And you know, with my grandmother, my grandmother eventually uh, uh, quit work at the Greenwood Towers and went up to the Portal Golf Club. That was an experience. Uh, she re she managed the Adelia Golf Club, the uh, mm -hmm. the old one, the old big house, yeah. the Adelia. And and uh, I used to go in there, and uh, I was in 12, 13, 14 years old at the time, I guess. And you know, I got to you know. You know, do the cleaning uh, the, so the people could like accept tables for her and and all the different service clubs that yeah. were in town, the Kwanas and the Kinsmen and 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 all them that did all had all their meetings there, right? And so, uh, the, you know, I had a lot of good experiences, a lot of new, got to know a lot of people in different, you know, parts of the town by being around my grandparents, I guess. I would say, you know. Coleman Phillips was one of the biggest stores in town at the time. That you know, you walk in there and they had the hardware, and you'd walk in through another alley when they and they had the fridges and stoves, and you know, your parents got to know Burton and and Roy Phillips, and, and you know, and Roy Phillips, um, he had a big cattle farm out in, in Garden Hill, and because they were all sort of friends with my grandparents, you got to go out and visit them and see these big cattle that they used to have. He, he raised a lot of big cattle for and won a lot of prizes with it. But that store was so big and it was, you know, it was, you know, like it's at Christmas time and you had all the toys there. Uh, and that was one of the, the biggest ones um, that basically you can, that I can remember as, as a visiting. Down on, uh, on, um, uh, uh, Queen Street mm -hmm. used to be a store called Linton Sports Shop, okay. right next to the show, and and then uh, used to go in there. And they'd have you know the all the uh, it was sort of like a sports store, everything store. You know, you could buy your your fish there, your you know, cats and dogs, and it was sort of like a you know, and and it was a nice store to visit as a kid. Eh? You know, to, mm -hmm. to see those kind of things. And uh, you know, like uh, I think basically they were the they were the, the two most visited stores. You know that you know as as kids growing up, you would visit mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Memories, you know, like like you know the yeah the the funniest things are basically how many people can remember uh, the Peanut Man. The you know the Planters Peanut Man. We used to have. The Planters Peanut Man walk up and down the street. One of those, one of the um, clubs in town. I don't know if it's uh, the Rotarians or the Lions or who or the Kinsmen or whoever it was. They had this peanut, and he went mm -hmm. around and sell peanuts, and he was just like the big Planters Peanut.
yeah. walk up and down the streets selling peanuts. And uh, we had uh, uh, so, some of the other things is we had basically um, um, uh, Mr. Phillips would was called a potato chip man. He went around selling big cans of potato chips and delivering them. The milk. The milkman, eh? <laughs> it was funny. I, I, as a kid, you know, you go out and and the, the milk would, when it was freeze, you get the cream at the top and you'd lick that off before your parents get get there to get it. But uh, as I when I and when I got my own home, hi, I said, oh, this is neat. I got my first milk shoot, <laughs> <laughs> and then they stopped <laughs> stopped delivering milk. Eh? <laughs> so you know, yeah, it was it was. Uh, they're the kind of things that you you remember. Uh,